I've done several videos about the new DJI Air 2S and I was extremely impressed by its capabilities. I've also done a comparison with the Mavic 2 Pro regarding video. You will find a link at the end of this one. But I know that many of you are very interested in photography. So in this video I will compare again those two models, but this time in terms of still images, in all sorts of light conditions. If you find it interesting, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Plenty of interesting stuff going on here. Let's quickly analyze the most important photo features for someone who is considering which model to buy. First of all, the price. At the moment, the Air 2S sells for 1000 euros against around 1500 for the 2 Pro. I suspect the price of the Pro will come down somewhat in the following months, but the price difference is important, so this model has to offer something extra to compete with the 2S. Regarding size, the Air 2S weight 595 grams against 907 for the 2 Pro. The 2S is certainly easier to park and carry around, although I still consider the 2 Pro relatively portable. A small advantage here for the Air 2S, but not a deal maker. But more importantly, the 2 Pro is just above the 900 gram threshold, and therefore, under European regulation, an extra written exam is needed, and that is a huge point in favor of the Air 2S. The size and the resolution of the sensor are now the same for the two models, 1 inch and 20 megapixel. They are the only two models of the Mavic line with a sensor of this size and resolution, so I expect them to perform much better than other models and relatively close to each other in terms of photography. The photo shooting modes are also the same and include single shot, automatic exposure bracketing, HDR, hyperlight, burst and time shots. The only difference is that in the Air 2S, HDR and hyperlight modes are integrated into an intelligent mode called Smart Photo which analyzes the scene and acts accordingly. I have shot all the images for this video in automatic exposure bracketing, taking 5 pictures in rapid succession at different exposure values. I have then merged the 5 photos to HDR using Lightroom. Then I have post-processed the best single photo and the image merge in Lightroom. I've noticed that in all circumstances the merged image works better for the Mavic 2 Pro compared to the single one. There is less noise and richer colors. With the Air 2S the individual single photos are so good that in most cases there is no need to use the merge photo. But in any case I like to shoot always in automatic exposure bracketing just to make sure that I don't accidentally get a badly exposed one. Let's start with a top-down shot containing vegetation and some architectural features. These kind of shots don't contain the sky and therefore the dynamic range is very limited. We don't notice a huge difference between the two models, but we can see that the color of the two S are more natural, especially in the water, in the small fountain, and in the palm trees. While editing the images in Lightroom, I've constantly found that the Air 2 S has a richer choice of colors, and it was easier to obtain the shade more suited for each scene. If we move toward the edge of the image, the quality holds well for both images. But we notice even more the extra detail and richer colors of the 2S. In this image shot after sunset, the colors of the 2S are again much more natural and the light on the trees is excellent. The colors of the 2 Pro look a bit flat in comparison. 
The difference in detail is huge in the three branches in the foreground and the town by the sea. But to be fair, the photo taken with the 2 Pro was shot about 20 minutes earlier and when I took the one with the R2S, some clouds have settled in and the light condition was a bit more friendly. Mount Etna as sunset. In both images the colors are very nice, although again I slightly prefer the one made with the R2S. There is hardly any noise on both of them. In this deep crop there is much more detail in the trees for the R2S and the buildings are also sharper. Here we are again right after sunset and both images look very nice at full size. In deep crops we again notice a touch of extra detail in the trees and the buildings for the R2S. Let's move to more difficult situation, but first let me make a point. Back in the old days of 2018, I was a teenager and the quality of photos and footage made with drone of the Mavic line was frankly very poor. Shooting anywhere in the direction of the sun or using a ISO value higher than the base one in low light would cause disaster. Vegetation and architectural details looked very mushy and moire was a constant issue, especially in footage. The great thing about drones was that they could fly and therefore access different points of view, but many scenarios were simply to be avoided, as drones just could not handle them. When the Mavic 2 Pro was released, it was head and shoulder above the competition for prosumer drones, except maybe for the Phantom 4. I've done a specific video about photography with the Mavic 2 Pro compared to the Nikon D850. You can click on the link on screen if you're interested. But three years in drone technology is a geological era and even though the Mavic 2 Pro still performs really well, the R2S features an array of new technology and opens up uncharted territories for drone photography and video much closer to full-frame cameras than two drones of the previous generation. Here we are just before sunrise, straight in the direction of the sun, although the sun is not out yet. The 2 Pro does a great job, but the structure of the sky and the light on the trees in the foreground with R2S are a thing of beauty. Now the sun is on the edge of our images, to the left of Mount Etna. Both cameras do well to avoid flare and chromatic aberration in the area around the sun, but when we zoom in there is a huge difference in terms of detail and color rendition in favor of the 2S, especially near the sun. This is a difficult one, with the sun on the right of the image and very dark elements in the foreground. In both cases I managed to lift the shadows without creating any noise, as the two models have a good amount of information. But to begin once again we notice more detail and richer colors with the R2S. The Mavic 2 Pro has an excellent reputation for performance in low light conditions and in fact it behaves really well. Notice how there is some noise in the sky with a single image, but the automatic exposure bracketing photo merged to HDR performs much better. In this one there is still considerable noise even in the merged photo. But it was very dark and it is still a level of noise manageable with a good denoiser. But with Air 2 we are almost in science fiction territory. For this image the scene was extremely dark and yet the colors and the amount of detail are stunning. Even on deep crops the amount of noise is very well contained considering that it was shot at a staggering ISO 1600. What? 1600 ISO with a drone? You must be joking. This scene was extremely hard. It was pitch dark. 
And there are some very strong electric lights, very difficult to control, bad flares. I had to push as much as possible in past production to recover something from the shadows, and yet the amount of noise is well contained, and it can be easily removed with the noiser without any issues. But the most amazing thing is that we don't notice any degradation as we increase the ISO value from 400 to 800 and then to 1600. This drone is really from another galaxy. The days when I would not dare touch the ISO slider with a drone are long gone. Click on this link to access my other videos about the DJI R2S including the one about photography and the comparison with the Mavic 2 Pro for video. Don't forget to hit the like button if you find this one interesting and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Come aboard! Great fun here!